Hello everyone. My name is Pastor Spohr, uh, pastor of the West Leroy Bible Church in East Leroy, Michigan, um, on D Drive South. For those of you that live in the East Leroy, or West Leroy area rather, um, you can listen to us 10.30 Sunday morning at 87.9 on your FM radio dial. Uh, we, we broadcast every Sunday morning uh, from the parking lot of the church. And if you live in that within four to seven miles, you should be able to pick us up. So if you can, then you can join us um, and worship with us on the radio. If not, uh, this is being provided through YouTube, so you'll be able to, to stay tuned and worship with us as I share messages uh, week after week. So... Last week, we finished a series of messages on living on purpose, and today we start a new series uh, out of the epistle of 1 John, <clears throat> what it means to be in a relationship with God. Now, as we consider the books that were written, or the letters that were written by certain apostles, the apostle John uh, penned five books in the New Testament. They are the Gospel of John, 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, and lastly, the Book of the Revelation. Now, there is a style in John's inspired writings that are unique to him. In every case, the Apostle John is concerned that we grasp what it means to be in relationship and fellowship with God, which was made possible through his Son, Jesus Christ. In the Gospel of John, the Apostle John drives home the importance of believing God by accepting Jesus Christ as Savior. The word believe is found about a hundred times through the Gospel of John. Relationship with God begins with Christ. Then in John's epistles, 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, John emphasizes the importance of living out what God is putting into us, from His Word, and by His Holy Spirit. The three epistles are filled with practical teaching of how God-fearing people are to live in a godless world, and how to deal with issues faced in the church because of the effects the world has on us. John's focus is on maintaining relationship with God, with each other, and a healthy relationship with those in the body of Christ, members of his church. And then in the book of the Revelation, the fifth book that the Apostle John penned by leading of the Spirit of God, uh, the Apostle John gives us details of the vision God gave him while on the island of Patmos about future events. John made it a point to relate that relationship with God brings a confidence of a future heavenly home for believers and God's judgment on those who choose not to believe. So for the next several weeks, we are going to spend some time looking into the three epistles of John, identifying what it means to be in relationship with God as God-fearing people who live in a godless world. And so let us begin by uh, looking at First John chapter one, I'll read the first. Uh, the first chapter is ten verses. Let me just read that as we begin. I'll be reading from the New International Version as I normally do. First John chapter one, verse one. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our own with our eyes, which we have looked at and our hands have touched, this we proclaim concerning the word of life. The life appeared, we have seen it and testified to it, and we proclaim to you the eternal life, which was with the Father and has appeared to us. We proclaim to you what we have seen and heard, so that ye also may have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son, Jesus Christ. We write this to make our joy complete. Verse 5. This is the message we have heard from him and declared to you. God is light, 
In him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him, yet walk in darkness, we lie and do not live the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his Son, purifies us from all sin. Verse 8. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, and purify and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Verse 10, finally. If we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar, and his word has no place in our lives. This is the word of God. <clears throat> so, as we begin this incredible epistle of John, there are three things we learn here of what it means to have relationship with God. The first thing is this. Number one, it provides an open door policy to God. It provides an open door policy to God. Our relationships have beginnings. Unless there is a beginning, there cannot be a genuine relation a relational connection. Your relationships are what they are because at some point <clears throat> you became connected by family, by friendship, by work or social contact, by association or by marriage. And those relationships have continued on for better or for worse depending on what you've done and what others have done or not done to either nurture them or not. When the Apostle John wrote the, this epistle, he did so to help the reader focus in on some important truths regarding our beginning point with God. So, as we consider what it means to have relationship with God, it's wonderful to know that our God has an open door policy. That is, um, even as the Word of God says, um, for whosoever shall Call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. See, anyone can come to the Lord. Uh, it doesn't matter what your status is. It doesn't matter um, how good you've been, how bad you've been. It doesn't matter um, uh, how much money you have or how little you have. It doesn't matter uh, how sinful you believe you are or not. Uh, when we come, when you come to God, God accepts you for who you are based on the fact that He is a holy God and recognizes that we are sinful and we need help. So the first thing that we consider and find right off the bat as we can, as we read the, the Epistle of John is this first. Relationship with God begins when we receive Christ. Relationship with God begins when we receive Christ. So, do you remember when you accepted Christ as your personal Savior? As with all relationships, it begins when we give our heart to someone, when we are honest, when we are open, when we are transparent, and we, when we feel free to open up and reveal what, is re what we are really thinking. At the age of 19, um, I realized that I wasn't a believer. And someone came to me and shared with me the gospel message, which I'd never heard before in the way that I, it was said. Even though I was raised in the, in the Reformed Church of America, even though I went through catechism, even though they taught me about God and about Christ, I never came to accept Christ as my personal Savior. Until at the age of 19, someone asked me, if you were to die, where would you end up? And my conclusion was, I thought I would probably make it to heaven, but I wasn't sure. So first, and most important is to receive Christ as personal Savior. Uh, I realize, I look at this, and our time is almost spent. Uh, so I'm going to end this video, and we'll see you on the next one, okay? This is uh, two of three videos. See you on the next video.